Hello, everyone. My name is Gary Baumgarten, but I expect you already know that. And I welcome you to this discussion on Facebook Live, PalTalk.com, and on YouTube. Well, we've all seen the imagery. I could play it for you like they do on the uh, cable news channels, but I don't think I have to. They're in our minds. Uh, what's been going on in some of our major cities in New York and Philadelphia and Chicago and Seattle, certainly in Portland and other places where there have been riots uh, in Minneapolis. Now, of course, initially these riots uh, were an outgrowth of demonstrations over something that was absolutely hideous that occurred in Minneapolis. But now something else is going on and it's extended beyond the original core of folks who have been taking to the streets to protest in many cases, such as Chicago, where it's pretty obvious the rioting there is organized. And uh, we could get into that a little bit as well, but we're not here to talk politics. We're here to talk about whether or not businesses, companies should be doing business in those communities. Now, look, I work in New York City and I am, hoping that the city rebounds. I'm scared that it may not. And when it does, it won't be, of course, what it was before. There's going to be a, a change in, in the atmosphere, the quality of life in New York City. But my friend, Chris Whalen, who is a CPA who deals with small businesses, he's taking the opposite approach. Not that he's anti-city, but he is pro-business and he has concerns about the businesses and their employees. And he recently did a podcast in which he told his clients and people who are not his clients, because instead of charging like every other CPA, he sends out this information often for anybody to use, giving back to the community, so to speak. He's telling them, do not do business in these cities, at least not until they are safe. And I said, whoa, nobody else is saying this. This is a little politically incorrect going against the grain. If I know one guy who will come back on my program and talk about it, it's Chris Whalen. And sure enough, he jumped at the chance to be here with me. And I appreciate it. Chris Whalen, thank you for joining us here on Facebook Live, PalTalk.com, and YouTube. Thank you so much for having me again. Well, I, I love having you because you tell it the way you see it. And I, I really appreciate that And anybody who I'm interviewing. So, Chris, why the hell are you telling people not to do business in these communities. Well, first of all, it's it's not a political you know statement at all, or it's not d driven by a political feeling, right or left. It's just that you know employees um, employees going into these cities um, face a, a greater risk of harm. Of course, that makes sense to everybody. Some of the uh, people that are protesting or rioting have been emboldened um, to understand that even if they're arrested, that they're, they're going to quickly be released and even have felony charges dropped. Um, so that's one of the most important things that have, has worried me is that, number one, people are roaming these cities at different times of the day. I've had clients in Seattle and Minneapolis even the past few weeks that you would think things are calmed down and suddenly there could be a group of people that don't like how you look or what they think you represent. And uh, they, could, they could accost you and abuse you verbally, even physically. Um, and they know that they won't be arrested. So number one, an employer, I'm really dealing with your liabilities. Let's say you you have a company that you do computer maintenance and you send people around the country. Well, you have a duty to make sure they're going to a safe place. Or if you could know that it wasn't safe, you could have a potential employer liability problem, of course. So that's my, I'm looking to protect business owners. They might not understand um, that they the, the level of liability is very high. And of course, we want to protect our employees. Does that make sense? Well, it does make sense. And I can tell you anecdotally uh, from my own experience, because as you know, I commute from New Jersey to New York City every single day, five days a week anyway. And I used to take the train to Penn Station and walk to uh, America's News Headquarters at 1211 6th Avenue. That's exactly one mile. I loved it. Unless it was like a pouring rainstorm with lightning. I didn't even care about the elements. I wanted my exercise and I would walk the mile to work and I would walk the mile back. At least I get two miles in every day. I thoroughly enjoyed it. But today you couldn't pay me to walk on the streets of Midtown Manhattan all night long last night. I'm getting alerts on my citizen app of stabbings uh, within blocks of uh, where I am. And they were all verified stabbings. And the other day, 
I stepped out for a breath of stale summer night air at about midnight. And there were five teenage miscreants in front of Fox headquarters. They were rolling around on the sidewalk. They were climbing on and sitting on two cars that belonged to employees of Fox that were parked on 6th Avenue in front of the building, jumping up and down on people's cars. And Chris, before March, uh, you know me well enough to know that what I'm saying is true. If I, as an adult, saw some teenagers acting in such a way, jumping on, I don't even know whose cars they are, but I know they work in our building. Uh, even if I didn't know that they worked in our building, I would have said, are those your cars? If they're not your cars, get off them. Yep. Oh, no, no, no. I get a shiv. You should have seen the way they were looking at me. Like, who are you? What are you doing? This is our sidewalk. I know what I'm talking about. I'm a reporter who worked the streets of Detroit. I understand the vibes of uh, what happens uh, in situations like that. I, I, I'm not ashamed to say I acted like the French army. I retreated. <laughs> Well, well, they're very opportunistic, and again, they're emboldened. I mean, I've been dealing with this for with business clients around the country, um, and all in all of these cities uh, where where they have the, this passive approach to the peaceful protests, as we know know of them. And so, I'm just I'm merging everyone, especially when it comes to bringing vehicles in. You bring up a good point. People do drive into the city, um, and we have to take. Uh, we, we have to put safety over profit. I personally am not going into New York City or Philadelphia. I have a lot of clients there in D.C., Boston. I'm not going to any of these places right now, and I refuse to send any of my employees there. Now, is it? I'm, I've, I've, I have turned down business in the past three months, good business that I normally would have taken. I do have to go and visit clients, of course, uh, all over. And I can't just do things virtually, um, so I've had to say I can't come. For example... I in my in, in my line of work, I have inventories to do, right? Auditing work. So that has to be done on site. We're going, we're doing auditing work and going into a warehouse in Manhattan to audit and physically count, let's say. I can't, I, I can't do that right now. Um, again, especially being there later early. So um also you're dealing with products. So my clients are shipping products around the country and FedEx can't. FedEx won't guarantee, right? They you, they can't even insure you anymore because because they, they don't even tell you how many other trucks are being hijacked. Still, the mainstream media doesn't tell you that they won't. So we have I, now. If you look, there's truckers around the country. I'm dealing with some of them. They're refusing to go to these cities too for these same reasons. Just for what I'm espousing here. And again, I'm not I'm not being political. I'm just being practical. You know, it's like if you could go on the Titanic, knowing there's going to be a storm. And suddenly the, the life preservers are, are, are not there, which are the police, you're not going, you know? And so we have, look what's happening in Portland area where you have the state police now will not go into the town. So the, the, your, the thin blue line or what you feel to be an average level of protection that you would have walking around your town does not exist in these cities anymore. And well, you, uh, have to, you have to open your eyes to it. You know, we do, when we do these kind of interviews, we use a lot of analogies. You could get away with the Titanic analogy. I already know I'm going to get cards and letters, uh, all right, uh, emails probably, not cards right. and letters and, and text messages about my comment, my flippant comment about the French. Hey, mm -hmm. French soldiers are just as brave as any other soldiers. I'm trying to make a point, uh, <laughs> and uh, it's a shame that I have to clarify that, but I'm going to do it in advance and apologize for anyone I may have offended. Now I sound like a politician, but is there a, a, a flip side to this though? Opportunity for people in business? What if I own a business and I want to expand to New York? I just want that uh, that address and that 212 uh, area uh, area code, uh, which you can't get any longer. Yes, well, but well, my well, point being, the, the, because of all this, uh, the rents are dirt cheap. Maybe instead of telling people you shouldn't go to New York, Philadelphia, Chicago, Portland, Seattle, we should be telling people, well, you know what? If you want to take advantage of a depressed market, now's the time to invest in those communities. Right. Last year, if you recall, when there was um, WeWorks was having their trouble, you know, and I, I did a podcast about that. Hey, there's these landlords now that thought they had these long term leases. This is the time to swoop in. So I, I see your point. And, you know, a lot of the retailers are not coming back. They've already said a lot of the, um, um, 
the larger Fifth Avenue retailers are not, they're not paying their rent. So if, if I could see anything it would be, hey, if you need to, if you need to store product in a secure location where some of these retailers were storing it, then, and it, it makes, it makes uh, sense for you if, if the proximity to clients is better, hey, we can now be in Manhattan and save money because shipping from Manhattan to Manhattan is a lot cheaper. But, but, with, but, but I would not tell anyone to, to try to get in and, and get office space. I mean, who knows how long this is gonna continue in New York. I could, I could sign a lease now and I might not be able to use the space safely for 18 months or two years, right? So until I see you know, a real respect for the police and rule of law, and uh, I think we'll all know when that happens, when when a lot of these incidents that turn violent are shut down quickly. You know, that's what's happening now. There's violence and violence for days. And then suddenly they'll send some police in to move some people around, but then they're back again for another night. So um, I can't see s suggesting to my clients to get space, even dirt cheap. I mean, who wants to have dirt cheap space when, when there's thugs outside of Fox News sitting on cars they don't own? Yeah, uh, CPA Chris uh, Whalen, who's in uh, safely secured in New Jersey, a stone's throw, but uh, uh, ages away from New York City where there are problems. Uh, you know, you say that this is not political, but you know, everything really is political. And I, the reason I say that is um, you're not going to see the support for the police until the politicians support the police. And you're not going to see the politicians support the police until the people demand it. All these politicians, whether they're Democrat or Republican, they, I mean, there are some exceptions, but they're very rare. They do this. They wet their finger, they stick it out the window, they see which way they're doing polls, they all have internal polls. Well, if I uh, speak out uh, too strongly against the, uh, the demonstrations and the rioting, uh, am I going to get reelected? Instead of What's the right thing to do? And I would say to you that uh, the prime example that we are seeing right now today is Chicago, because there was a young man in Chicago in the Englewood section who fired his gun at police officers. The police officers returned the fire, wounding him. They didn't even kill him. And there were individuals in the community who used that as an excuse to start a protest based on rumors that turned out to be not factual. And now uh, they're demanding reparations. Uh, the Black Lives Matter, I'm not making this up. I'm not uh, trying to uh, uh, attack anybody who says Black Lives Matter. I agree that Black Lives Matter, of course they do. But the organization, Black Lives Matter, the Chicago chapter, said it's okay to go out and smash the windows and loot the stores in right. downtown Chicago because these are reparations and we have the right to do this. I think so I just we're going to... way beyond. And so my point, however, Chris, is the people of Englewood, the black community in Englewood are standing in front of the cameras and the microphones and saying, get out of our neighborhood. You don't live here. We'll decide what's best for our neighborhood. We don't want any demonstrations in our neighborhood. And what happened? Suddenly, the police department saw support from the community. And as of yesterday, there is a task force, 1,500 officers strong in downtown Chicago, along the Miracle Mile, in cars, on bicycles. And God forbid we tell cops to get out of their car walking the beat to make sure no more looting in Chicago. I think it's up incumbent upon all of us. It doesn't matter our political affiliation to instead of saying what we think ought to be uh, promoted politically because of our partisan ideology to say the right thing and say, this has got to stop. It's okay to demonstrate what happened in Minneapolis by any standards is inexcusable. My police officer friends are the first ones to condemn what those cops did in Minneapolis. So that means, at least the guys that I know and the gals that I know, what they did in Minneapolis does not reflect what they believe in New York or in New Jersey or in Detroit. 
So why do you take it out on the cops in New York, New Jersey, and Detroit for what these dingbats did in Minneapolis? And people know what's going on. Having so many clients of every ethnic group around the country, you know, they're well aware. They're, you know, they feel just like us about it. They know they're not being protected. They're going to go to the ballot box and, you know, they're going to, uh, to definitely make some changes. Um, I want to go back to your point about the, the lower rents in Manhattan. And that's, poss that's possible that rents might be lower. But remember, these places are, 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 are having a revenue shortfall. They're going to have a tremendous deficit um, with a lack of tax revenue, sales tax, income tax. So don't forget, there's going to be a tremendous amount of increase in taxes. So remember, if you do do business in these cities, you have nexus there, meaning you have to pay a portion of your income tax to them because you're doing work physically there. So make, make sure you speak to your tax advisor because there's going to be a tremendous ta sales tax, property tax, income tax increases, and the federal government doesn't seem too uh, willing to give them aid for, for them allowing the cities to burn without, without coming in to protect them. So um, I, I, the other thing too about reparations and things like that, I mean, I've since 1987, I've been doing tax work, even in college, and I've worked with thousands of clients, people of color. So I am the, I am the main person who should be able to talk about, hey, is the system fair? Does the system work? Any, anybody that's taken my advice from a young age or even as a, as a 20 year old to do the right thing, to get educated, don't have kids at a wedlock, you know, do the right things, has made it to the middle class or better. I have never, I have, so I personally at the street level here for small to medium sized businesses have never witnessed any racial issue. It, it's impossible. People have to realize that, let's say I only want to hire Irish people and I'm a plumber. Okay, and that's it. I'm just going to go for Irish people. Well, and of course, the pool of talented people goes beyond the Irish people. They never could succeed because the talented people are going elsewhere. Not all Irish people are perfect plumbers. So, so it never, it never, I've never seen it in my career. My clients just, hey, can you come in? Can you dig the ditch? Can you make the photocopy? Can you be on time? They don't care if you face Mecca five times a day. They don't care what color you are. They just so... I, I'm saying that in terms of the American dream of reparations that I've dealt with tens of thousands of hiring hires, tens of thousands of clients and, and all different walks of life, uh, white people in black areas, black people in white areas, and just taking basic advice about how to live and save and work hard. I've never seen them have, have trouble excelling in America. And that's, I know I'm not at the corporate level, but that's a whole different world. There's glass ceilings there maybe for women, I don't know but I've never seen a disparity in income for the same work or, or race having being a barrier to success for someone who's doing the right things. So in our last minutes here, Chris Whalen, CPA in New Jersey and <laughs> folks who wanna reach out to him, I'll make sure at the bottom in the comments, I uh, give you all a link uh, on Facebook and on YouTube. But uh, I wanna talk about uh, something that you touched on, uh, the taxes increasing. It's not just in these uh, embattled communities. It's everywhere in uh, every state, in every county, in every city in this country. Uh, the tax revenues are down because business has been shut down because of the coronavirus. And I'm wondering, what are you telling your clients who are struggling to remain in business, what they can do to reopen or or even open uh, or prevent closing uh, permanently because of all of this? Well, that's a really good question. And, and I, I know people are very excited to reopen. We can understand their enthusiasm. But remember, there's been a lot of loans given, right? The, the PPP loans we know about, the SBA economic injury dis uh, disaster loan. But my advice to people is do not use that money to finance losses. Even if we opened 100% today, it doesn't mean people are gonna be comfortable coming into a restaurant, into another retailer or to a retailer. So my advice to them is to do what you can, but make sure you're not borrowing money to finance a loss. And it's, it's very specific. I know you get this, the, the, uh, the SBA loans can be a lot of money and oh, that's gonna, let, that's gonna let me work for three months, but that doesn't mean we're making money. So we have to temper our excitement. Everyone has a Christmas morning opening present excitement. Oh, I wanna get back in and open up. So. Um, I'm, I'm making sure that we're doing 
analysis on how much money we're going to make at different different percentages of being open for I'm doing that for every different type of client that wants me to um, to see when is a good like at what level of income do I need to get to to break even some hair some hair salons are 55 percent right some restaurants are only 35 so so the the advice is to this is the most important time to be be as frugal as possible and temper your excitement because we need to use that the money the government gave to be open for a profit well, I talked just the other day, and the reason I went there was to throw some money his way to the guy who runs the diner close to my house. And you know which diner I'm referring to. It's the most popular diner yeah. uh, in uh, in New Jersey, I think. And uh, he's doing outdoor. Uh, there's you can't do it indoors in New Jersey. And I and I and I know him long enough. I asked, and I'm you know, I if, me if I'm afraid to ask questions, I'm never going to make it as a reporter anyway. So. He didn't have to answer. I asked him. I said, uh, "Are you guys? Uh, is this, uh, you know, profitable? Are you doing this? Uh, you know, the seating is a fraction in the parking lot of what it was inside. If there's a big storm, uh, your uh, uh, customer base evaporates as the water uh, comes down. Even though you have a tent here, nobody wants to sit out when there's a thunderstorm." And he said, uh, "We're barely breaking even, but we have to stay open." We have to uh, get people excited about coming back. So uh, we're not making any money. We're just paying the bills. Right. And I guess that's pretty much what you just said. Uh, people have to uh, lower their expectations right. about what their businesses can do in the next several years. Right. And the, the other point is that, listen, I know that there's death from COVID. I understand that's tragic. And but these business owners, there's millions and millions of people that are impacted from the shutdowns of businesses. So in terms of 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 human um, sacrifice, they've given many, many, many months. A lot of them have lost everything. Um, so this could this should be counted in. I know it's not a death, but I think there's going to be, of course, an increase in suicides. But I think that we should quarantine the people who are at risk. But these business owners have given up everything for months to try to save lives. I think it's time for the country to give back to them and say, we're going to try to self-quarantine who we need to and let you open. Because it's, it's, at this point, it's not fair. With how things have peaked in April, if you look at the stats, I mean, everything is leveled off. Um, that it's not, again, there's going to be more suffering, much more than 200,000 COVID deaths every day that this goes on and believe me, I'm, I know I'm a little biased because I'm, I have all of these clients discussing these things with me. It's almost like a therapy session. I can't, I have all this burden, but I want everyone to think about that, that, that we should allow the business to reopen to a point where they can at least break even. And we have to get to, we can't just be completely shut down, especially office space. I mean, I've had all my people have had to work virtually, yeah. which is not practical either. Right. So listen, anytime you need uh, some therapy, feel free. I'll be happy to shrink your head, hopefully over a beer or a cocktail. How's that sound? As long as it's a restaurant that's making money. And as long as we are socially distant outdoors when we do it. Chris Whalen, CPA extraordinaire in New Jersey. Thanks for sharing uh, your thoughts with us. I'm going to be really interested in uh, seeing uh, the comments. And folks, we have interviews like this every day, Monday through Friday. Um, so if you're just watching uh, because you love Chris and that's why you're here, that's great. But follow me on Facebook and then you'll be notified uh, the next time we have an interview. I have somebody extraordinarily uh, interesting coming up uh, next week, uh, Tuesday, especially somebody who's a repeat performer that, that uh, everybody loves to hear from. He's the guy who is out fighting the crime and helping the homeless people with his band of marauding uh, volunteers wearing red berets. Curtis Lee will be, ba be back here on Tuesday. So uh, everybody have a great weekend. Uh, in, and as I like to say, stay safe. And as I also like to say at the end of our uh, get togethers, peace out.